Find out what's going on. Get involved. Change things from the inside. Make a difference. Take pride. Multicultural at its best. The Louisa Marshall Show. Coming up. Today, all new Simply the Best. Get inspired. From a refugee to a bank teller, to a vice president and a regional manager, to an author. Atta Argandiwal's passion for writing paved the way to tell his story as a refugee in his first award-winning book, Lost Decency, The Untold Afghan Story. Atta spoke of his war-torn country, his family, and his decision to leave. Today, Atta has finally made his dream into a reality to help his fellow immigrants in his new book, Immigrant Success Planning. A family resource guide. Flexibility is key, uh, and you have to be really respectful of the conditions that you are in. I was pleased to speak in an event to promote multiculturalism in the community amongst immigrants, and also to promote a book to help immigrants to be productive. As a dedicated humanitarian, Atta Argandiwal has a dream as a refugee from Afghanistan to help his fellow immigrants. He understands what kind of information they need and how they can integrate into a new country. His inspiration coming from his own personal experiences, his challenges and personal battles. Lost Decency is Atta's first book of his personal story, his life as a refugee coming out of Afghanistan. At age 20, he left his country and didn't know for sure what was going to happen to him. His life changed in North America that has given him the opportunity to be productive and to live a good life. So I am really grateful that North America is so welcoming to refugees and they, they give people like Atta um, and uh, other refugees an opportunity to be productive in society and to have a chance uh, to really you know, be productive and, and, and live a wonderful life. So um, I am very proud to be Canadian and very proud um, that North America is here to give those kind of services. From the moment that I made my basically new life or started the phases of new life in Germany as a refugee, and later as an immigrant here in the United States and being in North America, uh, I want to remind me, myself every single day as to how lucky I am. Or probably, when I'm, I always tell people that I'm one of the luckiest people alive for everything that we've seen and everything that we've gone through. So let me just share with you briefly about my experience as a refugee, uh, but more importantly, uh, a little bit about the real beautiful Afghanistan that we left behind. The Afghanistan that is completely, have been devastated, have been victimized for the last 40 years, a big time. So I, I was born and raised in Afghanistan, again up to that moment of departure. Uh, grew within the network uh, family of uh, basically a military family. My father was a military officer. He traveled all over the country was very lucky and a very big family of seven sisters and three brothers, so there were 10 kids in my family. I had an amazing father uh, that allowed us to, uh, that actually brought us up with great values, uh, which uh, again, got us everything that we, today that I see, uh, I owe it to my father and my mother, of course, uh, for bringing us uh, up to these standards that they wanted us to. For those that don't know, Afghanistan relatively had a peaceful period from 1919 or from the time of the independence all the way through late 70s. I know they were through some challenges in the early 90s and 1900s. But later on, uh, it went relatively for a good 50 years of a really peaceful time. It was an amazing country with, with just great traditions, many ethnicities, and a very peaceful land a remarkably beautiful land where it became a tourist destination or the darling of tourist destination in Asia during the 50s and 60s and even the early 70s where I myself had the opportunity to take visitors to many parts of the country with much peace and joy where there will be zero, zero concern about security at the time. 
So that's the kind of country, that's the kind of place Afghanistan was, but of course changed state. Uh, things changed, as you all know, with the influence of the communist regimes and parties in Afghanistan, and the, especially in the early 70s and late 70s, where basically a coup d'etat took place by local communists in Afghanistan. Part of the decision for me to leave Afghanistan was actually my sisters, my seven sisters who actually inspired me and the, honestly, the decision to save them someday was the motivation to get out of Afghanistan and to be able to secure the family. And that was indeed the inspiration. So I was able to work my way out um, in August of 1980 uh, to uh, submit myself as a political asylee uh, or as a refugee there at the airport. And that's what happened. So I was then uh, in Germany for 18 months. And then uh, I found Germany to be, unfortunately, even though I was very, very grateful for the opportunity to be there and to be accepted and to be secure and safe in a great environment, actually, in a nice environment, unlike Afghanistan at the time. But the lack of productivity of, in the lifestyle that I witnessed within those 18 months was what inspired me to get out of there and come up to North America. It was probably the best decision I made. Uh, so I actually uh, was able to come to the United States uh, and arrive there in the December of 1981. Uh, but what really again inspired me all throughout those 18 months was the fact that I wanted to do something for my own country for, and for the rest of the world. As a matter of fact, I became very interested in learning about refugees and immigrants well, once I became one myself. I really tried very hard and I studied, I researched a lot even when I was in Germany and I was looking for answers just like many others as to why. How come this is all happening to so many innocent people? Why are people traveling? Why are people are forced to leave their countries? So I did, I was very engaged in again doing research on immigration and refugee status. And then of course I went as I made it to the United States which was the best thing that happened. And within two weeks, I was very fortunate because of English language and the fact that I knew and I could speak English, I was able to land a job as a teller in one of the banks. And I worked for that bank for the 28 years and then I became the senior VP of Northern California. But the story, of course, is much greener and better, of course, for North America, United States and Canada, where I'm so delighted. I'm so grateful for the opportunities that we all have. And I'm really happy for immigrants and refugees that do get the opportunity to make it here to North America and to get on into a productive lifestyle. But even in here, of course, they need help. Organizations need help. And that's why I wanted to do my part. In doing so, I actually resorted to uh, basically my uh, lifetime dream of writing. And as a result, I wrote my first story first in Lost Decency, as Julie mentioned. But more importantly, my focus was always on creating a resource guide that could help all immigrants and refugees lead a successful life. It's nice to meet you, Ada. Welcome to Vancouver. Thank you. Good to be here. <laughs> it really feels great. It's a beautiful place. <laughs> no. Uh, is this your first time here? No, I was here about 10 years ago for a few days, uh, so this is second visit. How do you like Vancouver? I think it uh, really reminds me more of uh, it, it, its resemblance of San Francisco, except it's much humid here, obviously. It's, it's much, much greener. greener. <laughs> I, I know it's much, much greener. greener. Much oh greener, my. that's correct. Well, you're here to promote your new book. That is correct. Wow. Uh, immigrant Success Planning. A family resource guide. What inspired you to do this book? Uh, you know, the support and the help uh, that immigrants and refugees need around the world. Uh, they really, uh, from the time that I came myself as an immigrant to the United States, uh, and even before that, arriving in Germany, uh, the lack of resources is what motivated me. Uh, always to write something and to prepare a kind of resource guide that can be helpful to many. Uh, so the, uh, really the motivation was always there. It just took a longer time uh, to finally do it. What is the most important part of your journey? 
your struggles and how you were able to overcome the challenges? I think the biggest challenge, like every other immigrant and refugee, has been uh, trying to get your hand on the right resources to lead you into a successful life. I think the struggle to find uh, information uh, or the how-to, I think to me that was probably always the biggest frustration. And, uh, and that's what really inspired me again, um, to come up with more ways and better ways and to help others so that they don't have to really ask a lot of questions and for others to just rely on a brochure, but rather have something, a tool, that they can lead on a more successful life. So again, lack of uh, information and resources was what really was the biggest struggle for me during my first years of arrival. Yeah. So how did you overcome that? Uh, perseverance. <laughs> Asking lots of questions, uh, trying to connect, uh, building connections, uh, getting to the resources and not waiting yeah. for things to happen. Because for a lot of people just give up and they will just give up and sit around and say, you know what, I'll, hopefully maybe I'll ask this question someday. Yeah. And I did not do that. I wanted to get that answer right away. So I would say that persistence is what yeah. paid off. Yeah. Yeah. It, it could get very frustrating at first, right? Absolutely. It was, especially in the first years, uh, you're dealing with the, uh, the, you know, the emotions of leaving families behind, you know, the loneliness, you know, the new environment. So lots of things can really overcome, and, uh, and, but you have to overcome that. And that is actually one of the, the bigger things and uh, something I talk about, which is overcoming those uh, objections, uh, overcoming those challenges, uh, and not caving in. In your book, in your book, chapter 17, caught my attention. Mm. It's very interesting to read the personal rules to live by. <laughs> That's very, very interesting. You know what? That really, really caught my attention. So, okay, let me read just a little bit on it. Please. Build on traditions and celebrate new ones. Don't forget you're in a new land and the traditions and cultures here are different. Um, that's, that's really something. Uh, it means a lot. I think traditions and uh, great habits and things that, uh, the qualities that people bring with them, the values that, that have been established through their generations and the past, uh, for them to really enjoy that, for immigrants and refugee communities to really uh, hold on and not give up, uh, but at the meantime add on all of the new uh, benefits or the, new, uh, the values that are, that are now in their new world. A combination of the two really can bring them lots of success and joy so that they will not be uh, depressed, they will not be lonely, but they kind of build on those. And I think so that's why traditions uh, and uh, overall values and cultures really mean a lot to me. And it is really to me, they are energizers. They are things that, that can give you a lot of energy uh, to uh, share with others. But at the meantime, the things that you can be proud of. Again, proud of, and you can maintain that, but in the meantime, share that, but let, them, let that become a source of energy for you to really uh, lead on a more, uh, I would say, joyful life in the new environment. So the positive ones. Absolutely. Yeah. So, will you give up a long-time tradition? You, you're originally from Afghanistan. Will you give up a long-time tradition of your culture if it's not acceptable at all in the U.S. or Canada for your immigrating? Absolutely. I would say that the flexibility is key uh, and that you have to be really respectful of the conditions that you are in, but also what's really doable, what's really acceptable now. And there are several traditions even, uh, quite frankly, they're not even acceptable maybe right now in Afghanistan. They were there 30, 40, 50 years ago. So I think you got to go with the flow but respect the fact that they exist. If there are values in those traditions, don't carry on. And if not, let, don't, don't let that become a deterrent in building your life. If you can only give one piece of advice to a new immigrant, what will it be? Never sit down. Get those few hours sleep and then the rest have to be busy. Keep busy because you're making up for all the lost times and opportunities. Learn, educate yourself, Get involved, be in the community, and uh, provide service. Those are the kind of things that actually can help many immigrants um, get out of frustration. Because if they're busy, if they're doing things that can be beneficial to their community, 
those are very handy. But in the meantime, they can build connections. They can become really active members within their societies. So again, being busy, keeping active is probably key. Being busy, don't forget that, okay. Now the last part is, what is the best part of your life right now? The best part of my life right now is sharing my experience, sharing my thoughts, sharing my, um, the values, the things that have made me successful to bring that to others. That is probably the best feeling. Thank you so much. Good luck on your book. Thank you for having me here. I appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Please don't drink and drive. Don't text and drive. Always be kind. Let's stop bullies. Bye-bye. Um,